All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, the May version of uh, Tim Daly Studios Art Talk uh, to precede our art walk. So if you're local, please come down afterwards. Um, so I'll start as I usually do with my libation. It just seems necessary, right, for some reason. It's five o'clock somewhere, and in fact, Somewhere is Palm Springs, so um, <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> All right, so um, today, Cinco de Mayo, the thing that got me started on this was Frida Kahlo, but that's not the topic of the day. It's not Frida Kahlo, except that she'll be a part of this uh, with it being Cinco de Mayo. But the topic is, um, sketchbooks and journaling. So what I have here to show you is some examples of, uh, we'll look at Frida Kahlo's diary and, um, and some other things you have, may have seen. And then I've gone and have marked several pages in my own sketchbooks so that I can talk a little bit about that creative process. So uh, cheers. I have my canine assistant with me today. He'll probably come and visit in a minute, I'm sure. But I wanted to start with um, with Adriana Diaz. Um, she was a teacher of mine in the early 90s, around the time that I was um, deciding that I needed to um, do my art for myself instead of doing it as a commercial enterprise. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it as a commercial enterprise. It's a good way to make a living. Um, but I was at this point in my life having a very elaborate midlife crisis um, where I began to realize that I wanted to do something that felt a little more meaningful. So Adriana Diaz uh, has uh, talked very much about the painting journal. She used to tell us we had to have a journal with us at all times. So as a student, um, I would get a small journal, a small sketchbook. I still have them, of course, somewhere, um, hidden in the dark reaches of a closet somewhere. And um, these uh, journals were where we would put down our thoughts and develop our ideas. So let me read a little bit from her introduction about the, the painting journal to give a little bit of uh, foundation for where I want to go. The painting journal is a tool of synthesis, a contemplative space where life and art can combine in spontaneous expression. While the projects explained in each chapter will take special time to do, the painting journal can go with you at any time. Um, I suggest a six by nine spiral bound book that will fit into a backpack, basket, or glove compartment, and that is what I got. Here's Eli. Um, Hi, honey. I have found that anything much larger is cumbersome to carry and awkward to keep close at hand, and I think that's true. Remember, this is not the paper you will use for projects described in the book. Um, while I may make suggestions regarding meditative projects to be done in the journal, it is a separate ongoing work space where you are free to stretch your ideas and images that begin with the designed projects. Uh, you will find uh, that I presume you are using your journal. So, you know, the book called The Artist's Way uh, has the same thing as morning pages you're supposed to do every morning. Keep the journal with you as much as possible. I take mine to the movies and sketch in the dark. I've never tried that. It's fun to see what's on the page when I get home. I often develop those images or ideas at a later date in the life. I hope that you will continue with the journal even after you have finished doing the projects in this book. My journals have become such an important resource that I remember the pages and dates each entry, pages and date each entry for easy reference. Um, there's a little poem on the side. It is easy to grow flowers above the ground. Sun does all the work. What beauty, friend, grows in the dark? What, what beauty, friend, grows in your darkness? What hothouse, earthenware gift do you bring today? Things are germinated in the dark. So, um, 
So I, I'm not good at doing this every single day, um, but I uh, do use my journals a lot to develop my ideas. So just as writing helps you um, figure out what you're thinking, if you're confused about something and you sit down and write in your diary, it, the writing process helps you figure it out. Well, the same is true for drawing. Um, the, there's a different method of thinking from the verbal and the uh, visual or the images, if we think in images, and I often do think in images. And I have to say that as I, when I go through these sketchbooks of my own, I do typically remember the drawings. I, I'm not usually surprised when I see something in the book, I remember drawing it, and I remember images. I'm very, uh, that's just something that I do. Um, all right. So let me, let me start here with Frida Kahlo. This is such a wonderful book. So Frida Kahlo did exactly what Adriana Diaz was suggesting. Here's the book. She wrote her thoughts and did the drawings, and they all happened on the same pages. Um, a lot of artists do that. There's lots of, there are many, many books of da Vinci um, that where he worked out scientific ideas and engineering ideas, as well as his art. So in here, I have just saved a couple of pages to give you a flavor of what the book looks like. So here um, we have images and words happening side by side. I chose this one to show because I think they're really dynamic. Um, and yet they're different, so they're on different pages, but you can see some similarity in the colors of the paints. She may have, uh, who knows, gone back and uh, worked on these things back and forth, uh, may not have happened at one time. Um, and here, true, I love this page because of the big splotch in the middle. It shows you that this was a real working diary, working journal. Um, where she worked out ideas and where she worked out what she was doing. Um, here's some more. I thought this was a really interesting page because of the roots that are starting to appear in here. Um, and here I thought these were just nifty um, things. Now the idea here is that this entire journal of hers, this entire diary, was photographed and printed here. And then there are some essays in this book. It's a wonderful book. Um, I, got, I got it because I had enrolled in an MFA program that I later decided not to pursue. Um, but I bought a couple of books and this was one of the books I bought and I decided to keep this one after I didn't need it for the course. Um, and then just more dynamic, um, dynamic images. All right. So, um, so she's working out her ideas. Well, she's not the only one. And I know I show this book a lot um, because I love this book, but I have, I actually have a real reason to pull from these pages tonight. Um, and this is Surratt, George Surratt. And he did these wonderful drawings. Um, and the reason I want to show you these, and I picked out a few special ones, is first of all, this page here, are pa these are pages from, you can see on the overleaf, pictures from his journal as well. And uh, now let me flip over here to some more pages of sketches that are from journal pages for him. But what's cool, and these I think are really nice. So he's working in pencil, he worked in Conti Crayon um, in these books as well. I, I'm not sure, I think some charcoal, but I don't know if those happened in those books. Most of the uh, images in this book are Conti Crayon on a heavy nubby paper. But the thing is, and I like to point out, here's his famous painting 
uh, Sunday at Lagrange Jot. But in this book are some of the studies he did in advance, some of the ideas, now of course, watch me not find them, some of the ideas that he worked out before, um, where'd they go? I know I had them pulled out. I think, is this kid in here? He's not in this, oh, this dog, that's what I wanted to show. It's a wonderful drawing of a dog. I saved it somewhere. Now watch me not find it. Here's a lovely drawing that is not related to that. Here it is. So this dog, his study of this dog, beautiful silhouette, this beautiful is this dog here, worked out. Um, then the other was this bather that I know I saw. So here's the uh, final painting, and here is the bather beforehand. The lovely, delicate nature of those. Um, I have a little solicitous thing. I have been asked about my name lately. So in uh, 90. Six, I think this was in Berkeley. Um, we met. <laughs> My cameraman is frustrated because I move around too much. Uh, we met this guy with a, a famous name, and um, he was selling this book at the time, uh, an anthology of articles and, and interviews by him of different people. But the reason I thought this might, you know, loosely fit in with this, it's got a, it's printed and designed, it's laid out in a journal-like fashion, where there's text over here with pictures in the middle of it. This is very similar to journals. And this to another example. Here's a good drawing, but here's some other, some heavy writing, some highlighted writing. If I see something, a quote from a, an artist that I like, or something I want to remember, I'll often write it in one of these sketchbooks because I know that I'll come across it again. And I'll come across it when I'm in an art project. So I wanted to show that and my lovely pen of the photograph that I guess Stu took. Can you get it? The Tim's Leary. Lisa Hoffman uh, made this into a pen for me. So, um, something I was going to say and I forgot it. Did it come back? Or not? So, um, anyway, uh, that, so now let's look at some of these. I, I don't have an order uh, for these. I put this one out just because it's, it's a drawing idea that I go back to, but I don't ever expect it to become a painting. It was just a drawing in colored pencil that I did, something I worked out. But the idea of these pieces um, in a graphic format might come up. So I used to do this all the time when I worked in visual merchandising. I wouldn't uh, keep a journal like this, but anytime I had an idea um, that I couldn't use in the moment, I would, put it, I would draw it out, write a note or two, and put it in a folder, an ideas folder. Um, my, what I noticed is, and this is the point I was going to make before, the part of this is that it keeps you kind of in a regular format of working on the art um, on a regular basis. So if you stop for too long, you're starting over again. Um, and my observation uh, when working in uh, visual was that I would, um, uh, I would have a million ideas when I was super busy. Never a problem. When I was getting the stores, whatever store I was working at ready for the holidays, um, I would have more ideas than I could use ever. So I would write them down and I would put them in this folder because in the middle of the summer, when things were really slow and I had a project to do, um, I would forget them. 
I would, I would have no ideas. What was I going to do? So I'd go back to the folder to um, not necessarily to copy them. That didn't usually happen quite like that, but um, but to spark another idea um, started. So um, that's good. Like I say, I don't know what order these are in. This one has an awful lot of pages saved. So let's look here. So uh, some of the ideas become paintings and some of them don't. That goes that way. And the reason I say that one is because this is one that I used as the basis for a painting. Doesn't usually happen that direct, but um, when it does, it's fun to see that, it's fun for me to see the process of how I went through that. Um, I have at least one more of those somewhere in these books, we'll see. Um, something that I drew up but never went beyond this. Um, a fine idea, didn't have a place for it. This is something that did become a painting um, that I drew from this particular curve, which was a curve I saw, this angle and curve. Um, on a mountain range in the Rockies. Uh, I was on a train and uh, leaving Denver heading west, we went up and I saw this and I thought it was just beautiful. I pulled out a sketchbook and uh, a small sketchbook that I was carrying in my travels and then repeated this shape so it eventually used it for this. Adriana Diaz said, uh, paint the pages. Just, you got some extra paint left over, paint a page in your journal, and then someday you'll go back and maybe you'll draw something on top of it. Here's a case of that. This is also something that became um, a painting uh, for me. Uh, the painting was a little different. In this case, I'm looking at slabs of rock is my idea here. They're mountain ranges, um, but these are slabs. <laughs> and a banana on the side a banana on the side just because another page like that. Something that seemed really fun at the time, looked too much like escalators to me. So it never went beyond that. So I'm fascinated by, fascinated by rocks. Um, probably has, it, it's probably why the Burren in uh, County Clare in Ireland was so uh, uh, special for me because there are so many rocks there. Um, and these stacks of rocks that might become a figure of some kind, and that's what I was playing with here. And with here, those kinds of lines. Um, these were fun to do. Um, but they never went beyond this. Um, maybe someday they will or not. Doesn't matter if they do or not. Um, here's just another um, mountain range drawing. A lot of these came out of our visits to Palm Springs in the day. We don't have to look at every single page, right? Um, I. I marked this one because I thought this was cool. I like how um, these colors are working here and how there's no color in that shape, but it shows up there. Um, however, that's where it ended. Something else that became a painting. So those three that I showed you that have an architectural feel all became paintings um, and prints eventually. Um, paintings were my favorites of them. And the uh, final of this painting had more of these. <laughs> they almost look like spines here. And I had a figure of uh, a woman over here done like the rock drawings that I had uh, earlier. So, so there's a little remnant of something that I did. Um, I don't know what I saved here. Oh, just more of, look, I painted on the paint, Adriana. I did it. Um, 
These colored pencil things are really fun for me because I like how the shapes emerge and how the colors uh, come together um, and that. Something that I worked on as a painting on paper, but never got finished. But something in these shapes that made me want to keep it. More of my, so, so these journals typically have a time frame. Um, I don't really always write it down, so I don't know the years of these. But here's more of these slabs of rock that I was doing before, previously. And when I was in Ireland uh, during that time, I did tree drawings, simple, I don't know, can you see these lines here, the line drawings? I did things like this. I never did them with these stripy colors. Um, this was an experiment. Um, maybe it's a little maypole-like. Um, they're nice, but I don't think that it'll ever become uh, more than that. It was fun to do. It's all fun to do, right? That's all I've saved in this, because this one, as old as some of these are, still has a lot of empty pages in it. So, how'd that happen? Um, let's go here. Let's see what's in here. And which way am I working? I'm working in this direction. So, this, this first drawing is uh, 2007. So, that tells me a little bit about that. Here's another one of those we were visiting Palm Springs drawings. Um, I like this drawing just like it. It is, too bad I didn't do it on a better quality paper than I could have put it in a frame and maybe worked it out a little bit more. Beautiful scene though. Um, another one of my mountain, working out some mountain ranges, this would have been 2011. So that doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't draw between 2007 and 2011, but I drew somewhere else. And this one, actually, um, again, drawing of a mountain here that kind of went going, and that eventually became, and you'll recognize it eventually became this. I extended it a little bit more. After I finished it, I thought, oh, boo, I didn't put it on the, um, the right place on the canvas, but then I decided I don't think I care about that. <laughs> I was happy with it the way it was. Set that aside. And uh, let's see. It seems like the time is going quickly. Uh, some of these were in Ireland in 2012, like this beautiful tree. It was a gorgeous tree. That doesn't do it justice. Um, and some sketches of some rocks that I was never, that were beautiful, but I was never able to make into something else. Hmm? And it's more, were you able to see the lines of that? Yeah. Just a little crevice of uh, flowers. I'll flip through here a little more quickly. This is a rock that I found and kept in my uh, studio in, um, in Ireland while I was there, and then left, in, I left it there. Um, something that emerged from this other drawing, and I don't know if I could find it quickly enough. It's this drawing, and then I went to this, these kind of crevices. So these were stones that had these marvelous cracks in them um, that I was trying to capture. And more of the same. I did uh, some leaf drawings, some linear drawings. This is one that I wanted glad I came across because that too, almost in its perfect form, became that, which is, um, I call it watercolor. It's probably acrylic paints on paper. 
Um, let me go, let me move to this one. something I did on a, a sketching afternoon. This is in uh, 04. So is this. At, uh, I want to say Fisherman's Wharf, but it was on the bay in San Francisco. Another uh, building. Um, I need to flip through see if there's anything special that I want to show. Sometimes I've used these to work through some questions in my mind. That's what some of these odd sketches are, um, like this one. I don't have any, I remember this drawing, but I don't have any idea why the duck has its uh, beak on <laughs> sort of thing like that. Um, so um, that's pretty much the uh, the gist. I wanted to quickly show some of these pages from Basquiat, and the reason I do this, and I, I want to say that I love this work, um, and the reason I keep going back to it is because it's got a a, a spontaneity about it that you don't usually see in, um, in regular work like that. You see images like this, but they're often graffiti-like, and that was his beginning. Um, and yet, he, um, there's something about the way he went about this that was really interesting and special, and they, they are not, you know, just random drawings. But he was able to do these works, these uh, graffiti-like works, and keep them spontaneous looking and not too polished, but polished enough, I guess, um, with that. So I think if I've got anything else in here that I want to show, all right, just some other stuff. Um, I've used them for various things, and I love to go through them, so thank you for indulging me with that. Um, do me a favor. I like to know who's here, so if there's a, a like button on your screen, you know, click like. Okay, Eli, is that okay with you? And um, if <laughs> if there's a meh button, that, you know, if you got one of those, you could click that too. But um, I'm really glad that uh, you sat with me while I was reminiscing through my sketchbooks, it was fun for me. And uh, so thanks for indulging me, and I'll see you next time. Have a good night. <laughs>